Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. I'm always shopping a little bit and uh, just uh, maybe uh, the seagull of the east coast, like uh, Chuck's the seagull on the uh, west coast. Um, I'm not maybe displaying my stuff uh, as much as some other ones do, but uh, I was happy to get that little vice. And uh, this is a Wilton vice, original Wilton, pretty good shape. Paint's not too stripped or anything like that. It rotates uh, this direction. It swings into that direction, those, you know, the, uh, now the second axis. And it goes up and down like this here, the uh, third axis. So this uh, nice Wilton vice, uh, three axis is a pretty valuable, valuable piece. You see them on the ads like uh, once every 10 years. You may, you may have maybe two in the same week, but uh, once every 10 years is, mo is most likely uh, you're going to find those. Um, was perfect. Price was decent. Uh, paid and everything, but that with another vice. So he grabs the uh, first vice. The other, the other one offers me to uh, carry it for me. He said, "Oh, passing along with this one." He said, "I'll grab this one for you too." Grabs it by the handle, and uh, yep. Ended up with a kit vice. So, it ends up falling on the concrete. The uh, the handle just let go, and the this these are the uh, skid marks from the concrete. So, what I'll have to do is uh, put this piece back on there. On there. Luckily, the vice is not too oily. The surface is pretty gritty. I might need to. Uh, do some cleaning up a little bit, but not that much. The um, the alternative for this, you know, the guy said, "Oh, you can just you can you can make you know grooves and everything, and uh, you know, like uh, use rods like ni high nickel rods and things like that. Uh, heat up heat up the vice, and uh, you know, it's you know, it's pretty good shape. So see the uh, the Wilton uh, signs, everything is there. So it." Heating this up, uh, the most likely get uh, all the paint stripped, and uh, you know, you don't you don't end up with a very nice vice. Also, um, if you're talking about uh, making a repair, like in this part here, the uh, let's say the um, the the word that between the jaws, y you might have a few thousand pounds of pressure between there. So there, a weld will be more like uh, more likely or solder. Uh, uh, you know, like soldering or whatever, silver soldering or bronze soldering. But this slide here, since it's, uh, I'll just untie this a little bit. There you go. This slide here is a continuation of the, uh, the slide here. Let me get that. Let me get a pointer. It's going to go a little bit better. This is, you know, the continuation of this slide here. And uh, it's more a guiding slide than it is the uh, a really uh, high strength at the at that point mostly by the end there so what i'm thinking of so that there uh, won't be uh, you know just uh, undoing all the finish on this i'm thinking about uh, mechanical uh, using epoxy high strength epoxy and mechanical holding on this here we go we'll put this back in here i'll make some holes in there make holes, a few holes, maybe two or three, and uh, trying to bring this together as uh, as close as possible. If all in all this fails, I mean, uh, there's always solar soldering uh, but uh, or bronze soldering, but I'll try to uh, not having to resort to that. As I keep on working on this, I'm trying to uh, chip off the little pieces that uh, could be loose or anything. I'm trying to fit this on here, but the more I uh, try, the more I realize that uh, I'm not going to be able to use this little piece here. First, I kind of lined it up on the uh, on the surface here, and uh, if I match some part of the curve here, I can't match the other part. Just uh, if I lean it there or whatever, whatever I try to do, this uh, this little piece has been bent and twisted. Here you go. Um, let's. Uh, I'll try to show you this here. See the um, see the gap in between and underneath there. 
see on the other side. So uh, being cast iron, um, it's going to be just kind of impossible to really put that back in shape. There's going to be places where material is missing. There's going to be places where material is too much. That's not a problem, but uh, where material is missing. And uh, cast iron, you can't, uh, you can't just unbend it or just uh, do anything with it. So what I'll be doing is I'll be grooving it to this part here, removing enough material and make uh, another part to fit in there. It's going to be uh, solid, solid steel. I'm going to be going a little bit above you know, over there, make an angle, stick it with the uh, proper epoxy, and uh, line it up. So let's uh, let's see a few steps to get there because this is a this is kind of an arc, and I gotta have to, you know, um, pursue this arc into the new piece there. Here we're having to deal with the uh, thickness of this wall here. So um, a few ways to do it. If you use a regular micrometer. The problem is the anvils are flat here, so uh, by using flat anvils, you're going to have a problem of uh, the inside curve there. That's not going to give you uh, the proper reading. If you need something very approximate, that will do, but uh, you can use this pin here. This pin is measured at 374 thousandths, so you use the pin inside there. By knowing the uh, diameter of this, you uh, get there with the micrometer. And try to keep the pin as straight as possible. What I'm trying to do is uh, try to avoid the pin to uh, stay on the bottom, stay at an angle or anything like that. But come on, you. Okay, now that we uh, we get the measure with the, uh, the pin here, everything. So we get the measurement 843. will give you 469, 469 thousandths of an inch. Second method, <coughs> which uh, sometimes you have, sometimes you don't. This uh, micrometer here has got two um, curved anvils. So they're, uh, they're ball shaped. So that's meant to measure pipes or whatever, uh, whatever is round surfaces. So by going into the uh, inside there. Let's try to see what we're getting. We're getting 468, a little bit more, 468N. Let's say 4 tenths. 468N, 4 tenths. And next method for this will be uh, Let's make sure we're clean. We use a caliper. We use the uh, portion at the end there because if you use the uh, flat portion, the white flat portion there, you're uh, you're going to be pretty much well off. So, keeping it right angle we're getting 467 and a half. 67 and a half. This is more approximate than this one. And this one is very close within the, what's in just about half a thousand. So favorite methods, method one and two, method three is not as good, but you're getting decent result. I if you're with uh, one thousandth of an inch on this, you're pretty well off. So we'll be lining up visu visually on this mark and uh, square, you know, right angle there is going to be looking about like uh, if you can just install the camera at the proper angle. Not yeah, I think that should be about this. So 
here will be eating up uh, right up to here and try not to touch the uh, the writings there that should be uh, feasible Let's get at it. I added this for a uh, little bit of safety just to make sure that it doesn't want to go down. This is the 14 millimeter uh, end mill. This is a high speed steel. We're going into cast iron. Cast iron, you go a little bit slower. You can take a little bit bigger bites, but taking them slower. That's the, uh, the, the mostly the way to work with the uh, cast iron. Let's, uh, let's get it up and see about uh, taking a bite in this. Uh, no lubricant, I don't want to put any oil in there because it's going to be a method, a method for a cold uh, coal repair or so. Seems to be going good, just hope it stays that way. Last thing you want is a uh, cast iron to get too hot. With the carbon content in there, you're going to be uh, very sorry you did. It's going to get very, very hard. Seems to be going good. We'll keep a few, uh, maybe a millimeter or so, or 40 thousandths for a finishing cut. Seems to be going good. So let's get at this. I'm running about 700 RPMs. I'm getting about, uh, the cuts are about one third of the uh, end mill. Okay, we're getting uh, as far as it needs to go. And let's go deeper. This is not a, uh, an end mill that can dig, so. Uh, A little bit more. So this is about as deep as it will go. Let's uh, get the whole surface cleaned up now.
Okay, there's been a little uh, change of plans. I, des I decided to leave that little uh, button there, so I'll make a <coughs> let's say I'll make a, a little pull into the other part that's going to go on there instead of grooving in there anymore. And this is going to adjust right on this. It's going to be used as a uh, seating part. I think that should be uh, making a good uh, a good alternative for a solid. Uh, Let's say a solid uh, seat for the other the other part. So let's uh, get ready for the other part now. <laughs> 